Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So for all your tea sipping needs, don't forget to go on to lovelytea.net or amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash lovely tea. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the video. All right, so you guys just saw that meme, so y'all know what that meme damn means, okay? We're talking about the Pissy Pied Piper once again. So as you guys all know, I've been keeping up with this story. It's been a bunch of drama going on on social media. Now, Sony Records just recently announced that they're parting ways with R. Kelly. They dropped them from the label. And then as of earlier today, Universal Publishing has also dropped R. Kelly as well, okay? On top of that, everybody from this documentary is out speaking. They're doing interviews. They're on Dateline. They're on Good Morning America. Folks are really milking this entire situation. We got ex-bodyguards and former managers doing Facebook Lives. Everybody's writing a book. The brothers out here doing news interviews. This entire situation is a hot damn mess, but you know what? I'm here for it, bitch, okay? And then on top of that, we also have clout chasers like Faith Rogers, you know, attacking me for no damn reason on social media, coming at me. Y'all seen all the drama that went on on Twitter and on Instagram. It got so damn bad with this girl I called Gloria Allred myself and spoke to the people at her office and they ended up contacting me back. And I let them know that their so-called client, the so-called R. Kelly victim, is attacking me on social media for no damn reason, okay? But anyhow, I wanna go ahead and put together all these video clips all this stuff it's not gonna be the full videos if y'all want to go you know watch the full videos y'all go find them and go watch them yourselves but these are just all the videos giving y'all somewhat of an update you know different things i've been posting on instagram a lot of folks have been wanting to update on this whole mess so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys these video clips go ahead and check all this stuff out i don't know how long this video is gonna be and i'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary was he married to Aaliyah when she was 15 he was married to her when she was 15 elvis was married to priscilla but so then 15 is not of the age of legal consent, right? I mean, right. except that my understanding is that she did not claim to be 15. And in order to get married, she had to lie about her age. And he is saying that he had no idea. No idea. After he married Aaliyah, I did get the license. I did that. I didn't forge it myself, but I, I, I walked her into places that gave her IDs. And I did that because Robert was... Uh, told that he had to do this to save himself from jail. Uh, I'd been with him from 85 to 95, and because of that, I, 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 I stood in the gap to help him for that moment. Uh, it was supposed to fix things. It was supposed to change things. It was, it was supposed to give him a, a reality check, because that's when it first started. That's when it happened in my sight. Coming up in the Kenwood days, uh, watching them play with uh, Tiffany Hawkins and uh, the Javantes, and uh, uh, they were kids. They there was no sexual activity, and it was the beginning. So nothing was really happening. It didn't happen until after he got in. It was the beginning. So nothing was really happening. It didn't happen until after he got his deal that he became a monster to me. And um, I don't want to be misunderstood as. as, as I left him in 95. I'm not with him. Everybody that's with him after me, they pretty much knew what he was about. And, you know, not to name names, but they know who we are. Well, if I name your names, then you're going to be set out because you need to be set out because you sat there and allowed that boy to continue to do what he did to grow into the person he's grown to be. And you riding there on the side of him like he ain't doing nothing wrong. See, I, I, I'm a good guy now. I'm a nice guy. God has saved me. That book relieved a lot of pain from me. See, I walked in a lot of pain after R. Kelly. See, I, I, I had... It's a long story. You ought to check my book out before you judge me. God bless you. And keep For that help, and we've got ex-wife of Andrea Kelly. When, when we say that to introduce you, how does that make you feel? Um, you know, a lot of people feel indifferent about it, but they have to understand I was the wife. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the jump off. I wasn't the side chick, you know. That's who I was, but it's not who I am. Okay. So I'm okay with it. I wear that as a badge of honor simply because I'm also a mother. Uh -huh. I'm the mother of his children. 
So I, I know that people would think, oh, well, why would she say that? And he was abusive, this, that, and the other. At, at the same time, I was still married to the man. I'm still the mother of his children. And that's a part of my legacy. It's a part of my life. It's a part of my children's life. So I'm not going to be upset or down on any part of that. So you're now dancing for Art. From a young woman who says she met R. Kelly when she was just a teenager working as an intern. Speaking out in a Datelight interview that will air tonight, she accuses Kelly of abusive behavior. And we're also hearing from the embattled singer's attorney. I was in love with him. I just didn't know what to do. Like, I didn't know if this was normal. I didn't know if this is how adults acted. Like, I, I just didn't know. I didn't know. Tracy Sampson says she was introduced to R. Kelly while working as an intern at Epic Records during the summer of 1999, starting when she was 16 years old. And he's like, well, can I kiss you? And I was like, no, he's like, okay, well, give me a hug. And then, like, when I gave him a hug, he just started kissing me. Samson tells Dateline's Andrea Canning her relationship with Kelly lasted until she was 18. It was then that she broke things off and filed a lawsuit against the singer, accusing him of sexual abuse. Kelly denied having sex with her, but settled with Samson out of court for $250,000. Her first on-camera interview coming in the wake of anti-Kelly rallies outside of Sony Music headquarters in New York and Kelly's Chicago studio. Protesters calling for police action and an end to producing and playing R. Kelly's music. Lady Gaga, Celine Dion, and Chance the Rapper have all pulled their collaborations with the chart-topping artist. The record companies are abandoning him. Uh, other artists are all of a sudden acting like they're shocked by these rumors that are, that are floating around. He's having a very difficult time, but he's strong, he's tough, he wants to put out his music and continue performing for people, and I expect that's what he'll be able to do. Kelly's attorney says he didn't represent the artist when Samson alleges she was abused, but insists his client has done nothing wrong to her or any of the women who have come forward. So is R. People, Kelly saying that all these women, they are all lying? That is absolutely Every correct. Every one of them. Every one of them. Yes. Miguel, at this point, is there an official police investigation? Well, Craig, police haven't officially or formally discussed opening one, but just last week, Chicago police visited Kelly's home after a tip that two women were being held there against their will. Police say those were independently interviewed, both women, and they say that they were being held there not against their will, and they were in good health and spirits, guys. All right, Miguel Amalgar. Miguel, thank you. Uh, and for more of this story, you can watch Accused, the R. Kelly story that's tonight on Dateline NBC, 10 o'clock Eastern, Nine o'clock, sir. Do you regret taking part in surviving R. Kelly? No, I don't. Because I'm still surviving R. Kelly. You know, I got to look over my shoulders. Carrie Kelly is singer R. Kelly's younger brother. He grew up with him in Chicago, and he's speaking out now. To see all these other women come forth and, and, and hear the allegations and different things, I felt bad that I didn't speak earlier than what I what I did. Kerry says he hasn't talked to his brother, whom he still calls Robert, since the singer's acquittal on child pornography charges a decade ago. Charges that centered on a sex tape R. Kelly allegedly made with an underage girl. At the time there was talk, Kerry was actually the man on the tape. Let's be clear about this. On the record, you were not the man in that video. Tape. I was not the man in that video. After the case ended, Kerry says the two spoke by phone. Once he beat that case, I called him and I said, hey, hey man, you know, God gave you another chance. You know, God gave you another chance. And his arrogance and, and you know, and, and people not believing different things that he's accused of said, God didn't give me another chance. I gave me another chance. My money gave me another chance. That was their last conversation. Since then, more than a dozen women have accused R. Kelly of mistreating and abusing them, sometimes when they were underage, sometimes in the singer's West Town studio. Is there truth? to those allegations. I mean, well, you know, he, he married Aaliyah. I mean, it, it don't get no truer than that. Aaliyah was 15 at the time. The marriage later annulled. Is he a pedophile? I mean, I can't honestly say that for sure. I just know that he has a problem with control. 
you know, um, I love my brother, you know, he, but he do have a problem. And if anybody out there love him, they should want to see him get help. Kerry Kelly says he noticed troubling behavior decades ago when his brother would ask him to, quote, get girls for him at concerts. Are we talking underage girls? I mean, to me, they look underage. To me, they look underage. Kerry says there's fallout from his speaking out. It's divided his family, leading some members to make what he calls false allegations of sexual molestation against him. He says his 12 12-year-old daughter was bullied, then unfairly suspended for making threats against her school last fall, even though a friend confessed he'd made it up. District 148 officials declined comment. You have the, the people over here on this side is, 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 is speaking the truth, and they're not, they're not with that. They're not, they don't condone it. Then you got people on this side feel like, well, if I ever say anything bad about Robert, and you, he might not never give me anything. He might not never look. He might cut me off. Kerry Kelly told me he was repeatedly molested by a family member as a child and believes his brother may have been as well. I reached out tonight to R. Kelly's attorney for comment, but did not hear back. In the newsroom, Dana Kozlov, CBS 2 News. Rob. Dana, why did Kerry Kelly want to speak out now? He says he wants to speak the truth. That's how he was raised. His mother raised him to speak the truth, and he feels it's important to do so For you. now. Uh, let me bring in uh, your daughter, Joanne. Joanne. Ultimately, this is your dad. I know you haven't seen him for, for yeah. quite a while, but this is your father that we're all talking about in a very unpleasant manner. How do you feel about this, about your father and, and about what's been going on? Um, well, particularly about the situation that is happening in the blogs and, you know, everything, all the allegations that are going around, it's very hard to digest um, because as a lot of people know in the post that I posted, as far as my reaction to everything that's happening, that's still my father. Um, it's a very hard situation to digest and even process because my, my heart is torn into two separate places. Um, as my mother said, I don't want to confirm or deny anything that the women have been saying about my father or any of the rumors that have been going around throughout the years about my father. But as I said, I know him. He's my father. I, I grew up in that house to a certain extent. Um, so I spent years in that house. And um, so it's very painful to see that all of these people are now being affected and have been affected by somebody who I do care about um, and have a very strenuous relationship with and is so close to me. So well, it's, it's and, very and Joanne, you say that, I mean, uh, do you still love your dad? Do you feel like you have to defend him? Do you, I know that you were reported <clears throat> as calling him a monster, but which you deny. Are you conflicted about your feelings about him? As a young woman, I think you're 21 years old now, a number of these allegations concern young teenage women. You would have grown up through those years hearing those allegations. What do you think of your dad right now? Right now, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm very torn because at the end of the day, it, it's still family. He's still my blood. Um, so yes, I do still love my father and that is something that I want people to understand. I never came out and said what I said to make people feel like I hate him or I'm bashing him because that's not it. But you have to, at the end of the day, be responsible for your actions. And I had to do what was best for me and my family had to do what was best for them. And if my father is a toxic person, then unfortunately we just have to love him from a distance. There's no love lost, but I just had to separate myself. Does, does he try and contact you? No. When no. did you last see Not him? Um, honestly, it's been a few years since I've seen or spoken to him. I don't know exactly how long, but it's it's been a while. I'm scared to talk to him about what, Nisi? What's on your mind? I mean, you said it's been 11 years? Uncle Robert, what's up? You know what I'm saying? It's been years. He's like, hey, Key, you know, what's up? And, you know, yada. So, you know, we sit down and um, he takes off his shoes. He takes off his shoes? You know, yeah, he takes, like, off his shoes. Like, I'm just sitting up, like, on the little, it's like a white leather, um, a white leather.
white leather couch. Uh-huh. And I'm, you know, just sitting on the couch. And he takes off his shoes. I'm like, okay. You know. Then he gets to, like, lay down on the couch and put his feet on my legs. Huh? I'm like, okay. You know, because honestly, my brothers do that. You know, so I didn't think nothing of it. I'm like, okay, you know, this is just my uncle, whatever. <laughs> so he gets to asking me, he's like, um, you know, do you have any pictures of you? And do you have any pictures of your, your brothers? I'm like, no. Nah. I'm like, I don't have no pictures of my brothers, but um, I have a picture of me and my friend. We just went to homecoming yesterday. He's like, okay, yeah, let me see those. Mm. I'm like, okay, yeah, you know. <laughs> right. And, you know, it's me in the picture. It's my friend in a picture, and the first thing he says is, damn, she got a fat ass. I said, uh, Unk, she's 17. Well, and, and that's, yeah. I was just going to say, y'all, what year was this, 2008? This was 2007. 2007? Yeah. Okay, and y'all were 17 at the time. Yeah, well, I had this 18 in September. This was in October of 2007, because it's Big Jam, um, Concert was in, you know, 07. Okay. Yep, the first thing he said was, damn, she got a fat ass. I said, ugh, I said, she's 17. He said it again, like, man, her ass is fat. I'm like, oh, my Lord. Just thinking to myself, like, oh, my Lord. Right, right, right. You know, and so, um, after that, uh, um, you know, I'm just telling him, I'm like, Uncle Robert, I'm like, I'm raised already. I'm 18. Oh, no, you know, won't you just ask your mom, can you come live with me? I'm like, Uncle Robert, I'm like, no. I'm like, she's not going for that. No. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? Oh, well, you know, it wouldn't hurt to ask her. I'm sure she'll say yeah. I'm like, no. If you know my mother, no, she would not say yes. No. Shit, what about your dad? She uh, ain't tripping. I mean... He's saying to mama, she better be worried about killer crazy ass. What the fuck is wrong with him? Exactly. I didn't even want to, you know what I'm saying? I was just like my mom, you know? Right. I didn't want, you know. So, R. Kelly made you have sex with another girl? Let me call this. Why you want to call his ass out? He made you have sex with another girl? You want to have sex with another girl? No, I didn't. Who is April? 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 She's getting older. Who is Why April? Why do we keep talking about R. Kelly? R. Kelly made you have sex with another no, girl? No, nobody made me have sex with another girl. So how did it Did you want to have sex with him? Oh my God. Did you want to have sex with the girl? No, it was just at the moment. Nobody was talking. It because R. Kelly made you have sex with the girl. That's why. You had sex with the girl. Who is April? Hold on, hold on. What happened? What you mean? R. Kelly wanted you to have sex? No, I no. I'm saying at the moment that was it was at the time, but I it was just a one time thing. That's he had sex with too. What do you mean? I was, why R. Kelly had sex with too. Uh, obviously, you had that. But if I'm trying to, I don't know anything about anything about the other girl. That's, like, that's what I'm saying. Get that nigga on the phone. How's Drea helping? Drea's not helping. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. You want me to lie? She's not helping. She, she, uh, I mean, she's not right now. I mean, she's done a little bit, but she need to continue. She need to go to the authorities and tell him he's $197,000 back in child support. That'll get him in jail right today. But that ain't happen. How's your relationship with Michelle Kramer? She blocked me on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> yeah, Michelle, we don't have no, we no feelings or no, right. pa- no, no, I mean, we, we these guys are taking it too personal. We not taking it personal. We taking it to a point where we got to get these girls out. And uh, that's the reason why we won't give up on Joyce. We love her. I know I do. Yeah, we love her. Yeah, I love, I love all her. three girls very much. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not controlling guys. I'm passionate about my daughter. It's a good, good, good uh, head of household. It's me. I would love to do the round table with Jay. Um, Lisa Van Allen did that. And she did a she did yeah. a pretty good job. I would love to do it. I mean, I think it would be. We emotional. just did Dateline. Yeah, um, yeah, it would air what Friday. Yeah, Friday. Go get some psych help. One or the other, but get him some help. I don't want to get from nobody. Already, and he we wanted to go to Yana. Fix yeah, my we would have loved to went on to Yana. She's already turned to. I down. loved it. I would have yeah. loved to be on there.
It doesn't matter how to come secure to God, but we would love to be on there. And that's just keeping it real. But that didn't happen. We all right, you guys. So you guys just watched all of those clips that I put together. So like I said, this entire situation is even crazier. But now it looks like the new girl is being called out by Kitty Jones. Kitty Jones took to Instagram and she basically threw shade at the new lady, basically saying, FYI, please don't make me go off on the new lady with your $250,000 payoff and no dental work. So now one of the R. Kelly accusers is beefing with another R. Kelly accuser. But what I find funny is that even before all this drama, Jeronda Pace was also going back and forth with Drea Kelly and said that Drea Kelly scammed her out of money. And then at that point, after she had posted that, Drea Kelly threatened her with a lawsuit. And then you guys also heard in the video where the savages were also talking about Drea Kelly and saying that she's doing nothing to help. So I don't know what's going on with all these so-called, you know, accusers and people coming out, but it's really making this case look worse and worse. And this is why I say I feel like a lot of these parents were were involved in allowing their daughters to go with R. Kelly, um, one being Diane, Aaliyah's mom, who also okayed it, didn't see nothing wrong with it, hence why she's still defending R. Kelly. This entire situation is just getting messier and messier and more and more convoluted by the day. Honey. I swear I cannot keep it with all this fuck shit concerning R. Kelly, okay? It's like so much mess is going on that R. Kelly's almost starting to look like a victim in some people's eyes, okay? This entire situation is crazy. Now we have another now we have another woman who was paid 250 grand and keeps silent. Now she's coming out talking. Now R. Kelly's niece is also coming out talking. Now they got R. Kelly's daughter out here talking. We got the brother doing interviews. We got the ex-manager selling a book and how he did some fraudulent shit to get Aaliyah a fraudulent driver's license to marry R. Kelly, but then he wants to wag his old ass finger at everybody else as if he wasn't doing fuck shit as well to protect R. Kelly, okay? So this entire situation is insane. And then we have the savages are out here just looking thirsty, looking like they want to be on television. So a lot of people are just giving all these folks a side eye. And this is the part that just bothers me with everything is the fact that now because of all these folks clowning, going from one platform to another, you know, writing books, seeking attention. It's taken away from the seriousness of the things that R. Kelly has done. You know, this entire situation is sad because it takes away from the people who are true victims. It takes away from people who are really going through stuff. When I see folks who are more concerned with television interviews, press conferences, and paychecks, as opposed to trying to get justice, it makes me side-eye their credibility. So this entire situation is crazy, but I don't see it ending anytime soon they are definitely coming for r kelly like i said there will be criminal charges pressed on him you know what i mean but i just find it funny that it takes a whole documentary series okay it takes surviving r kelly to wake up the record labels to rake up the publishing companies to make all these people finally distance themselves from r kelly when all this information has been out for years when i've been talking about this for years on here other people have been talking about this for years and it fell on deaf ears nobody cared it wasn't a big deal but now that it's been putting a nice package on Lifetime, all of a sudden everybody wants to be a hero and start taking action, okay? But my thing is this, okay? Make sure that same energy that y'all have for R. Kelly and, you know, getting rid of his publishing and dropping him from his label, make sure y'all keep the same energy for everyone, black, white, male, or female, who's out here doing fucked up shit in this industry. Because like I told y'all on Instagram, if they was to really clean up house, if they was to really get rid of all these people who are involved in deviant shit in the industry, and that goes for music, television, and movies if they was to truly drain the damn swamp like we've been saying this whole year ever since the whole Harvey Weinstein situation there would be no one left for you guys to watch there'd be no one left for you guys to listen to there'd be no one left in entertainment damn near okay it's like every other day there's a me too situation there's an allegation and a lot of these are not false allegations a lot of this shit is true a lot of this stuff comes from true places so the only thing I say is this okay 
the same energy that y'all have for R. Kelly, make sure y'all have the same energy for everybody else as well, okay? Let's not make one the sacrificial lamb and then turn around and ignore all the other fuck people and all the other fuck shit that's going on in the entertainment industry in general. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy ass situation. Once again, concerning R. Kelly being dropped by Sony, being dropped by his publishing, and not everyone attached to this documentary coming out doing interviews and, you know, going live, selling books. What do you guys think about this entire situation? We know there are real victims out there, but do you feel like some of these other people involved in this entire situation may not be really victims in the grand scheme of things? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. <laughs> Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.